Hey everybody, welcome back to 6.5 on the road. We are here at Computex 2024 in Taipei, joined by my good friend Olivier, and we are here with some exclusive coverage and content uh, courtesy of our friends at Qualcomm and the new Snapdragon X Elite. And joining us today for this interview is good buddy of mine, Steve Long, uh, SVP in the Devices Group at Lenovo. Steve, thanks for, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, uh, we've known each other for a long time. I know this is not your first experience in Taiwan, not your first Computex. I'm just kind of general overview, like what do you think about kind of the level of interest and excitement and kind of buzz around this year's show? Yeah, I've, I've been coming to Taiwan for probably 23 years. I think one of the last times I might have been here, we might have been together, yeah, yeah. Mr. Shrout. Uh, but I feel like this one is, there's absolutely an enthusiasm around the opportunity in the heart of what I've called the heart, the lungs, the soul of the ecosystem, which is in Taiwan, uh, there is, there's an excitement. There's an excitement because of the possibilities of what everyone expects that AI is gonna bring to actual use cases and applications and what people can do. And I think everyone in the industry is trying to own a little bit of the, that narrative yep. and uh, get behind what we can actually do with it. But there's excitement, is yeah. what I'd say. Yeah. It's, it's different than, than other times. I, I totally agree. Yeah. So in the, the last year, tell us about the, uh, the journey of the, the developments and uh, of the Snapdragon X Elite platform, what that's been like, and also what, um, what made you want to be part of, of that journey and make that happen? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So I'm relatively new to Lenovo. Uh, I'm about uh, 90 days into uh, to this, to this new but job. But not new to the client PC world. Definitely not say. new to the client PC yeah. world. Uh, after a long time at another silicon mm -hmm. uh, provider out there, I was at Intel for a long time, um, joining. So the, the journey that Lenovo's had with Qualcomm, is a, it's not a year old journey, it's not new. It's actually, it's been uh, three plus years of deep collaboration. You can even go b before that with uh, some of the phone businesses, right? Lenovo's uniquely positions from, from pocket to cloud. And so, so some of the relationships been decade plus in existence. But more on the PC side, for the last three plus years, there's been a lot of co-engineering and co-development because as we know, uh, um, app compatibility is a big deal. And Lenovo being the ThinkPad, being the 30 year old tried and true brand in the commercial space, um, Qualcomm and Lenovo have partnered on trying to drive app compatibility in, in, in the commercial segment. So it started three plus years ago. We've been on, an, on a journey. But um, in the last year, we've gotten extra excited because our friends at Microsoft have obviously jumped behind and done a lot of collaboration and uh, co-engineering development. We dedicated a team here based out of Taiwan to do some of the Exelite uh, design, uh, design work. And, um, and we're excited now to have both consumer and commercial products that are, gonna, that are, that are announced and soon to be in market. I, I want to touch on the consumer and commercial side, right? Because L Lenovo is very well known for commercial products, the ThinkPad brand, but also yoga coming out. How do you view those product lines kind of integrating the, the AI part of the AI PC differently from one another, or will it be kind of even across them? Like, what's, what's kind of the differentiation in, in Lenovo's mind about how you use yeah. that feature? Well, I think everyone in the industry still is defining exactly what an AI PC, there's different definitions of what an AI PC is. We even at, at Lenovo, we probably have, I would say today is the highest standard of what we would quantify or classify as, a, as an AI PC st standard, right? You have to have a certain amount of tops on, this, on the uh, you know, p platform tops on the system. We think there needs to be an AI agent. We think there needs to be localized language models on the device. So defining AI has been a little like, okay, there's, there's a little of that that we need to get into. Sure. I think with the hype of all this happens, like the, there will be a convergence in definitions, I think, in the next couple of years. And I'm trying to get our teams to communicate around what things can, what, what AI devices can actually do for users, whether it's in commercial or consumer. And I think of it in, you know, there's going to be personalization, there's going to be productivity, and there's going to be more, I think, more protection and privacy. As much as that can be a little controversial or edgy mm. on that, I think there's going to, th th that will be the case. And so for differences between consumer and commercial, 
I think you're going to continue to see the con commercial devices anchor on the trust and the commercial, the the the, the protected side mm, of this. More the security side. More the security yeah. side will be important. The the reliability, the manageability pieces, and making sure that all of those can happen in a safe, secure manner. I think that's going to uh, probably uh, be the defining moment for for commercial. I think consumer. My take is, and this is all opinions at this point, but I think there's going to be excitement of playing with a digital agent or a, 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 a digital assistant, I mm -hmm. should say. And what does that do for me? Can that make my planning of my life easier? I think there's going to be some applications like voice interaction and real time translation that could be useful, like when we travel. How many times have you been here in Taiwan trying to catch a cab? Yes, yes. <laughs> and had a problem, a challenge. Yep. And so there could be applications like that that could be could be very useful in consumer. And I think productivity um, will be a little of both. Can it make your life easier on the per, on the on the consumer side? For the productivity side at uh, on the com on the commercial space, I think we're really excited about yeah. some of the applications. Yeah. And I think that's where we'll differentiate. Yeah. Yeah. So digging a little bit deeper into that, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. But thinking do. about yeah, ThinkPad and Yoga, how what, what kinds of features and capabilities kind of stand out for you? Um, and and I guess it's it's a differentiation question, but it's also kind of like the tracks that uh, that ThinkPad and, and Yoga are on to try to differentiate themselves and create make the most out of the platform. Yeah. Well, I, so again, for uh, for 30 plus years, I think we're at 32 years. The ThinkPad has defined what the commercial PC is. One in every three PCs sold is Lenovo today, uh, and one in every three PCs sold in the in the cons commercial space are are hmm. Lenovo today and ThinkPad today. So I think we come at it from a power position already of differentiation. People know us for quality. They know us for reliability. You know, I was in our Yokohama labs in um, in Japan where the ThinkPad was was born, and um, you, there's over 200 tests that these products are put through. It's it's actually incredible. We make our own dust mites to replicate <laughs> seriously to replicate uh, dust mites in certain parts of the world. That's how crazy huh. uh, the 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 uh, the re reliability and the quality that goes into it, it is. But I think the differentiation really is also going to come from on device how we can create experiences which are unique and different by our work with ISVs, which Lenovo has. Um, you know, we. It's interesting because you see silicon providers talk about 100 plus ISVs that they work with. Those they're working with the ISVs and helping, but they don't come to life until a Lenovo gets in the middle of that, and that's where our relationships are going to differentiate. And then the other thing that um, Lenovo announced, and you saw on stage with, uh, with Cristiano Luca talk about mm -hmm. um, AI Now, which is our own digital assistant, which is on device, which will coexist with some of the co-pilot features and, and actually augment one another. But we see some of that as differentiation, which is unique to Lenovo right now. And we think that that's going to give us uh, an advantage, both in consumer and commercial for that matter. I think the demos that, that Qualcomm showed, and they were a little bit more future-looking type uh, uh, theoretical interactions with the AI clients and agents um, yesterday was, was really compelling. Um, and and I, I think many consumers, when they see some of those demonstrations, will think that's some far-off future. Uh, and I think it's going to be much closer. I think it's now. I think it's now. And I think the other thing that, that happens with some of these, it's now, I should say, it's, it, it's possible now. Yeah. I think like everything, the hardware, uh, gets there, software will catch up to what the hardware capabilities are. And if I had one message to all folks looking at, uh, at considerations, um, future-proof yourself right now, right, for, for what's coming. I'm dealing with some customers who are dealing with workloads that were created, with, like Teams or Zoom capabilities that started probably when we were all locked down in 2020 yep. and started to consume things that you didn't plan for in your devices that usually have a longevity of Three, some people are extending life of these products. It's like if you're planning right now for AI workload things and things that you're you know are coming, you need to get ahead get ahead of it now because I think we're uh, we're on the age of a revolution. The other thing I wanted to ask, I'm kind of interested. Lenovo has always been very good at platform innovation, materials innovation, um, super thin and light, new screen designs, foldables, things like that. Do you do you see? Uh, is there any attachment to how the AI PC 
platform is going to enable changes like that? Is it just kind of complementary to it? Is it is it going to drive some of these form factor or yeah, innovations? I think it will. Actually, uh, to your point, the X1 Fold, we've pioneered now. We're on our second generations of X1 Fold, and these are foldable devices and screens that now can fit into different ways and jigger in ways that we didn't think they could. Um, and we're very proud of those innovations. We're going to continue to push forward on that. And I think what AI capabilities on device as these things get smaller and more compact, we can now make them fit into spots that we didn't think could be things that were smart with uh, PC-like capabilities or, um, or smart capabilities. And imagine like voice interaction mm -hmm. with things. I start to see well, what's the definition of a PC. It's why we call ourselves the in, the intelligent devices group. That's literally we were joking right, before right. we started filming. Like intelligent devices, it's it is. We're devices, the devices group, and a device can be anything. And with a smart device now, one of the things that I have in my portfolio of businesses is what we called at, uh, at our prior company, the Internet of Things, mm -hmm. but OEM business and Internet of Things. So I see screens that we can speak to. I see uh, PCs that fit into terminals that we, would, that we could voice interact with that have capabilities that we haven't dreamed up yet. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of that, like I want to circle back a little bit about something you just talked about a minute ago, which is how you guys are augmenting. Uh, on the, the vision of Microsoft and the Copilot Plus PCs and where you take things from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so again, Microsoft is a, I think the Copilot and Copilot Plus features are going to be uh, game changing. We're excited about that. We have been, uh, I just came out of a conversation with our partners at Microsoft and uh, Lenovo is uh, a, a couple years ahead in terms of working with them and embedding some of the security features that they are proud about that, that, that sit under underneath uh, at a hardware hardware a hardware layer that's a big multiple <laughs> words there hardware layer um, that integrate with our think shield uh, some of our think shield protection and we've embraced in that so we'll differentiate on security but I also think what we'll um, what we'll do with uh, with Microsoft is in uh, embedding again some of the telemetry that we get from our AI now uh, capabilities into copilot um, and we're talking about partnering with them on how we can participate in uh, activation since our footprint in enterprise is second to none in the industry. So there's opportunities for us to do, to, I mean, we're on a service-led transformation at Lenovo. That was one of the things I've been most impressed with at this company is organically they've led through, a, created a service business. We have created a service business. And that's exactly what Copilot uh, is trying to aim to enable, and we'll participate in that revenue with, uh, with Microsoft. It's definitely an exciting time. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember there being this much kind of interest in the PC in, I don't know, a decade, you know, something like that. <laughs> well, it's, it's been a long time. COVID, there was some excitement, but for other reasons. You just needed to get one. You just needed to now get one. How's, how's it changing? How's it going to be, you know, really changing our lives and innovating throughout? So I, I think you're right. I think we're on, uh, we're on, we're all. That's why you, back to your very first question, right? I think uh, it's different, right? Computex is different. The buzz is different. People see the capabilities coming. There's still little, it's noisy on exactly what you're going to do with it. Proof is in the user experience. That's on us to translate. But the hardware is out there. The devices that we're going to be enabled and the capabilities of better uh, performance, a lower latency with some of the NPU capabilities that are behind the scenes that frankly the user doesn't care about, but they will care about when they see what they can yeah. do with it. And that's what's exciting and Very cool. why we're here. Well, thanks, Steve, for, for coming out and joining us and sitting and talking with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and for all of you, uh, thanks for joining us. This is 6.5 on the road for Olivier and myself. We've got uh, lots more conversations that are happening this week. You can follow us on social media and on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.